Our speaker today is Professor El Magarmet. He's a professor at Purdue University. Uh, he was my PhD advisor while I was there. And uh, aside of from being a professor, he uh, he consulted for many industrial companies like HP, like Telcordia Technologies. And uh, we're uh, honored to have him here uh, for this speech. So. Hello. So um, just to, um, to start things off, um, um, uh, some people uh, asked me about the, um, um, what is the Cyber Center involves and so on and so forth. So there are actually two parts to this organization at Purdue. There is a deployment uh, uh, part of the organization which is called ITAP, Information Technology at Purdue. And, and that organization uh, is about 300 people. And then we've got the Cyber Center, which is an umbrella organization for all the IT-related research, which is, I mean, obviously you could, you, you, you could tell that it's, it's, it's fairly large. And, um, and, and we'll talk about specific projects. And some of these projects could be as small as 10 people, and some of these project, projects are as many as 40 or 50 people that do the IT side of things. So I'm going to kick things off by showing you a very quick uh, video that introduces uh, the Cyber Center and what I do there. Scientists explore a world of endless possibility through experiment, theory, and computation. Research with innovative solutions and computing resources is the job of the Cyber Center at Purdue University. Building cyber communities is the goal of the Cyber Center. In order to build these communities, the center uses hub technologies, high-end computing, data visualization and analytics, networking and security, and learning and engagement. The Network for Computational Nanotechnology and their cyber community, NanoHub, provides the model for building communities in other scientific areas like biology and environmental science. The ever-increasing demand for computing resources are vigorously supported by Purdue's powerful computing resources and dynamic collaborations. Among them are grid computing resources, such as the National Science Foundation TerraGrid, Purdue's Visualization and Analytics Center, and the National Lambda Rail, the Envision Center for Data Perceptualization, and the many centers and programs based in Purdue's Discovery Park which continue to develop the underlying infrastructure necessary to support and accelerate the changing nature of discovery. The Cyber Center at Purdue is breaking down the computational walls, powering research and discovery and endless possibility. So this very last, uh, the very last uh, uh, gra uh, graphic that you saw with the different centers. These are the 10 centers at Discovery Park. And as inten intentionally, and as you saw in the, in, the, in, the, in the graphic, the cyber center is in the middle. In fact, we see ourselves partnering with all the 10 other, with all the, the nine other Discovery Park centers at Purdue University. And, and they vary from as far things as manufacturing, life sciences, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So let me tell you um, what I, um, what I mean by cyber infrastructure, uh, 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 in here we're talking about the whole gamut of infrastructure, starting with the people, the organizations, and the environments that support them, including all um, um, uh, hardware, applications, databases, and so on and so forth. And, um, and, and, and the mission of the Cyber Center is to, uh, is to um, engage in basic cyber infrastructure research, which is what I mentioned happens in Discovery Park, in the Cyber Center, and uh, uh, developing new cyber infrastructure, infrastructure tools and techniques, and also to deploy the results to real communities. And um, uh, this last uh, uh, point here of deployment actually happens between the Cyber Center and ITAP that I mentioned at the introduction. Um, so, 
to start things off, um, um, I, I, I want to first talk about the, the major motivation uh, 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 behind all this. Um, in Discovery Park, we've got all of these different scientists in different communities producing data and needing resources. So we see sort of that there is a, 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 a tipping point uh, um, in, 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 in this infrastructure in the sense that massive data is getting generated at the periphery of the, uh, of the uh, web, of the internet. And, um, and, and we need novel systems and architectures in order to deal with all of this data that, that's getting generated. And I'll give you an example. We've also, we have all of these uh, sort of driving engines and driving uh, uh, um, um, uh, technologies. And, and, and one that I want to emphasize here is the communication uh, uh, bandwidth that is doubling, in fact, faster than the speed by which uh, data storage and retrieval and uh, memory and so on and so forth is doubling at. And, uh, and this is really allowing us to, um, um, uh, to let um, scientists collaborate and work together, uh, though they are disparate, but they work together as if they are all uh, in the same institution. So the theme of this talk is that uh, big science is enabled through uh, cyber infrastructure, or in fact, um, how cyber infrastructure empowers uh, science, and um, um, so just to give you a um, just to give you an idea, um, 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 so one of the experiments uh, that uh, uh, happens in uh, physics um, um, generates as much data as the equivalent to 100 million phone calls going on concurrently. Now, obviously, I mean, I think this is silly because um, when you start, when you stop uh, trying, when you stop uh, knowing how to measure uh, data uh, in terms of uh, exabytes and so on and so forth, you start to, to represent them in terms of uh, these other abstract ways. But just to give you an idea of how much data that's getting produced, and, and it's, um, it's uh, an amazing amount of data that's getting produced. Not only that, not only the volume of data, but also the data types uh, that, uh, that are produced, that are being produced by uh, scientists are, uh, uh, are very, very varied and very different from what traditionally uh, 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 database systems and computer science uh, 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 ha has dealt with. Uh, um, so there's a tremendous amount of, of data that's uh, being captured and that people want to get access to and people want to share and store and retrieve and so on and so forth. Um, not only that, but, um, and I'll show you later on some specific examples, but the types of queries that, that, that scientists are interested in are not like what you and I are, inter are interested in or capable of stating. Uh, 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 they're not interested or, or capable of stating uh, uh, SQL queries, they want to be able to say, uh, to specify big domain, uh, high level queries such as how does a protein fold or what happens to space time when two black holes collide and so on and so forth. So, so we're talking about the need for systems that are, uh, um, that query the physical world, uh, that perhaps also not necessarily query the data, but also query actual physical objects that are accessible through sensors or through RFIDs, um, the very, very semantic intensive uh, uh, um, uh, discovery and that are interactive and perceptual. Uh, a, lot of the data, a lot of the systems and the applications that, that, that our uh, uh, projects deal with want to ask what if scenarios, what if this happens? Uh, um, what if um, I do this? What happens to the plant, the, the, uh, the, the metal levels in this particular plant, and so on and so forth? So we will also want to deal with fuzzy, inaccurate, and incomplete data, and we want to deal with uh, huge amounts of periscale uh, 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 systems, provenance and reliability and security, and so on and so forth. So we want to deal with everything in, in, in a nutshell. Uh, <clears throat> So let me um, uh, just take you here for perhaps a minute or, or, or 90 seconds um, 
uh, overview of some of the activities in the Cyber Center. So in the Cyber Center, we emphasize four major areas, and that is high-performance computing, networking, grid and middleware, and data analytics and visualization. And these um, um, areas are, so these are areas of strength that we have at Purdue, and there are centers and there are um, um, centers of gravity for each one of these areas. And, um, um, and obviously, security, virtualization, and provisioning, and management of the cyber infrastructure happens across all of these, uh, all of these layers. <clears throat> and then we have, on the other hand, we have the application areas. And, and these are the nine centers, the environment center, uh, healthcare, engineering, energy, homeland security, life sciences, manufacturing, nanotechnology, and so on and so forth. And, and, and what we do is we foster projects across uh, these um, uh, um, uh, application areas and the, and the uh, enabling technologies, or what we call the trust areas. So um, this happens within Discovery Park. And we collaborate with the, uh, with the um, existing uh, centers. We collaborate with the deployment unit. And the idea is that we push technologies out uh, um, um, through creating new um, um, uh, products and, 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 and so on and so forth. So there's actually a, um, an area at Purdue that does commercialization and startups and, 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 and so on and so forth. So obviously, um, um, my own area is in databases. And um, um, so um, uh, I would emphasize um, one aspect of this on, uh, on um, uh, trying to um, develop so our initial thing is to try to take advantage of data analytics and visualization. And in fact, uh, this week, there is a uh, consortium meeting at uh, Stanford, which we are part of, uh, uh, funded by the Department of Homeland Security, and um, on um, uh, data analytics and visualization. We have four, there are four regional uh, centers for data analytics and visualization around the country, and, um, and one of the regional centers here at, is here at Stanford. So um, one of these um, one of these um, uh, areas that I mentioned is high performance computing, and um, um, our goal is to our, w w what we're doing is working on uh, novel parallel architectures and associated compilers and system software. And of course, we have a scientific computing uh, uh, a program working on uh, numerical analysis and so on, working on parallel numerical algorithms. And, um, and this is done through the um, Computing Research Institute. And then we have a middleware and grid computing group. And, and this is done through the NCN, which I will, um, I will highlight uh, later on. And, and of course, we have the security and privacy uh, uh, a group that's leveraging the strengths that we have through Sirius and the multidisciplinary approach uh, uh, to security, that uh, uh, security, privacy, network security, and so on and so forth. And, 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 and last but not least is, are the problems of how you virtualize the infrastructure, how you manage the infrastructure, and how you provision the infrastructure in a uh, uh, shared uh, research environment. So um, let me take you through um, um, some sample uh, 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 um, projects. And um, as the um, uh, title of the talk, uh, um, our, our primary focus is to try to develop these um, cyber communities. And what I mean by cyber communities are, are, this is an example of a cyber community. If you go through the nanohub.org in the cyber center, you will find a lot of resources that are of interest to people working in microelectronics. So there are collaboration tools, there are learning modules, there are seminars, there's courses and tutorials, but there are also simulations. And, and we, uh, just to give you an example, if you look at the usage, we've seen the usage go from about 5,000 users to now about 12,000 users 
of people who are doing microelectronics who actually come to the Nano Hub and uh, do work, either take classes, learn certain things, learn techniques, uh, run simulations, and so on and so forth. And I'll show you a, um, I'll show you a, um, an example. Um, so if you went to the uh, nanohub.org, you'll see this. Um, portal here and um, so you, for example if you're interested in um, in carbon nanotubes uh, you'll find all of these resources you can go through a seminar um, there is a particular uh, seminar that's being taught by uh, Professor Alam, and um, you could go through, skip through different parts of the uh, of the uh, seminar. You could uh, view uh, materials and, uh, and and so on and so forth. But you can also do simulation through this uh, portal. You can actually run a simulation. So, for example, I could launch uh, the simulation and. Um, and I'll look at the um, so this is a model of the carbon nanotube but you know right in the middle of the simulation I may want to change the parameters I want to look at um, some different um, I want to get a different view of this uh, of this carbon nanotube and and I would run the simulation again I get the electronic uh, representation and then I get the uh, the visual um, uh, presentation. So this is a um, so this is a, uh, a an example of something that uh, you could do, and. Um, Again, um, so that, that was an example of a very simple simulation that runs in the, back, in, in, in the background. But you could also run uh, simulations, interactive simulations. You could actually uh, um, 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 so you could run interactive simulations uh, um, like these. Um, sure, if we want to go through another one, but let me just show a quick one. So um, you, you could go through the um, uh, visualizing a quantum dot. You could uh, um, um, change parameters. You could uh, 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 play with the simulation online as the uh, simulation uh, is running. So um, this is really, um, let me just do a let it run. So the significance of this is, per, to, to, to us, uh, it may not be all that, I mean, it's, it's something like running a VNC, but, but to, to a community of scientists, this is separating them from the infrastructure, letting them concentrate on the science, and letting the infrastructure run in the background, and, and, and not having to, um, 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 so I mean, um, so you, you see more than you want to see about uh, quantum dots, but... Uh, Let me just stop this. And um, so anyway, uh, the other example is going through um, web-based learning. And in fact, the majority of the users for NanoHub are uh, learners, uh, people that want to come and want to learn about a specific techniques, want to learn about a specific simulation package, and so on and so forth. And they actually, this is a, a learning module where they actually could go through they could uh, uh, take tests and run exercises, and they could see experiments and do experiments and so on and so forth. So basically, 
um, uh, what we do here is we allow remote access to simulators and, and, and computational uh, resources. And it's basically running a simulation uh, in the foreground and, um, and running a virtual machine in the, in the NanoHub infrastructure, in the, in, the, in the NMI cluster that we have running at Purdue and letting the user see a, uh, a remote desktop. And um, obviously, for some particular uh, uh, simulations and particular experiments, it doesn't make sense to run them in the NMI cluster. So these are routed through the Condor uh, Globus, through the TerraGrid, or through other clusters uh, uh, that we have. So. Um, the idea then for the NanoHub, and the reason that the NanoHub is very successful, is that it sort of uh, gives scientists a, a new way of thinking, of using and sharing computational resources, software, packages, simulations, and results, including data. And um, so this is what we're calling the science gateways, or the um, um, <clears throat> And, and the idea that we have and the vision that we have is that this nano hub um, um, constitutes a community, a cyber community, that then what we would like to do is would like to export this and utilize the same technology, the same idea of developing these cyber communities, and that is cyber communities is a, uh, an interface, a community for like-minded scientists working on a particular field, to collaborate uh, through uh, high-performance computing and grid and middleware. And now the idea is um, what we want to do is we want to use the same technology for other, to create other uh, uh, hub technologies. And just to give you an idea, for example, we have about 40 people that are building these hub technologies. Uh, they're funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, they receive about two million dollars of funding overall now, and and the idea is that over the next five years it will go to about three and a half million dollars a year, for the people that just build the hub technologies. So uh, let me give you another example, another flavor. Uh, it's a different flavor though, and that is the Ecoli Hub. We have a group of about um, uh, worldwide maybe. 40, 50, maybe approaching even, even more than that, uh, um, if all the way from Japan to Oklahoma and so on and so forth, uh, um, who are interested, all interested in studying the E. coli and all contribute some resources. They're each building a database, if you wish. And um, uh, the E. coli hub is building this environment, this cyber community, to collaborate and share um, the databases that they, that they have. So this imposes new kind of um, um, challenges because when, when, when you're sharing, uh, when you're sharing uh, simulation packages, when you're sharing data, then you've got to worry about uh, the schemas and so on and so forth. So we've got people who are working on uh, schema matching and schema mapping and so on and so forth, uh, 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 canonical interfaces. And, and, and what have you. And these are the different um, E. coli hub uh, resource databases. Some of them are um, uh, uh, clustering, some of them are uh, map views. Um, uh, um, ECOSIC is a, uh, is a pathway uh, database, there's a sequence alignment, and so on and so forth. So there's about 50 of these um, different databases that, um, that um, these scientists are interested in working on. And we have, within this group, we have about 10, but maybe about 10 computer scientists working on this project along with the biologists, helping them build this environment. This particular uh, uh, system runs on a bunch of heterogeneous databases uh, of all sorts. The, um, the, um, the, um, uh, all the schema matching and everything is uh, all sort of the front work is being done in Oracle. And um, um, this is a project that just um, about a year old. Uh, the funding here comes from NSF again. Um, um, the the uh, 
regional, uh, the Purdue Regional Center, um, the, visual, the Purdue um, uh, visual, Visualization Analytics Center, the PERVAC, is a uh, project that is uh, Department of Homeland Security funded project with the main mission of looking at disease outbreaks. Um, uh, and the idea here is with uh, a, a group of these regional centers in Purdue, we have one, and um, where we collect um, uh, uh, medical healthcare data and uh, this healthcare data, then we look for patterns. In fact, we're also integrating this with veterinary data because there are actually some diseases, for example, the flu that migrates from the swine to the uh, human uh, community. So, in fact, uh, we get um, uh, hospital admission data, emergency room data, over-the-counter drug sales data. We get a whole bunch of veterinary data um, um, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and what we're doing is uh, um, doing analytics, doing data mining on this data, trying to find uh, patterns. And, and, and I'll later on, I'll, 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 I'll talk a little bit more about some of the specifics because um, 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 when we meet with the uh, folks in the Department of, Home, uh, 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 Department of Health and Human Services, uh, they complain of the false uh, negatives that they get, the false, uh, the false uh, positives that they get in the sense that, uh, in the sense that um, for example, we, there was a case of... Um, in a little town, five people showing up at the emergency room showing the same symptoms, and uh, this obviously constituted an alert. And then upon further investigation, it turned out that these people are from the same family, which has less significance. There was a lot of school absenteeism uh, one day, which raised an alert, but then upon uh, further uh, investigation, it turned out that it was a senior day out. So, so what we're trying to work with them is and how to make the system a little bit more intelligent, a little bit smarter in terms of uh, um, um, detecting these uh, um, or uh, raising these alerts. And this is a, uh, uh, we're working with the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, Indiana Department of uh, uh, Health uh, Services, and the uh, and the uh, Federal Department of Homeland Security. In fact, the funding, most of the funding comes from the uh, Department of Homeland Security and it's through the uh, PNNL. In fact, this week there is this um, um, National uh, Visualization Analytics Center at Stanford, which is the reason that I'm in the Bay Area. So another flavor of project that we have in the uh, Cyber Center is a, uh, is a pipeline uh, project. And what we mean by pipeline is, so if you look at the uh, pipeline in, in uh, systems biology, you have different, you have proteomics, uh, people who are looking at the protein, uh, people who are looking at the genes, at the genome, people who are looking at the ion, metabolomics, cytomics, and so on. So there are different groups, different communities that are looking at different aspects of the, um, 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 of, of this um, um, biological pipeline. And, and, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a common infrastructure that, that, that they would use. So I show you two examples of, this, uh, 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 of these projects and then what we're trying to do to help them. So this is a session. This is actually a system that we built uh, uh, that, that, that does uh, um, um, protein analysis. And um, while it's going through the uh, demo, I will uh, maybe talk you through some of this. So when you go through the, um, to the pipeline uh, login, uh, the idea is you've got a, a blood sample, say. You run through the blood sample through a mass spectrometer, and you get, um, you get all of this data. You get a huge amount of data. You get perhaps more data than you, than you could handle, and what do you do with it? And, and the idea is, for example, you want to detect peaks uh, um, uh, the goal here is, is um, medicinal discovery, is to try to um, figure out uh, w what cells are diseased and what cells are not. So you've got all of these data is generated, the pipeline, this infrastructure we built, uh, stores all of these data, allows the scientists to visualize the data, to look at the peaks in the data, and 
and actually to go through specific experiment runs, uh, analyze them, look at the data for those specific runs. Um, Z values here uh, uh, indicate um, energy levels. Um, so um, the idea here then is to um, uh, run an experiment Take all the data that gets produced by the experiment, store all the raw data, but also do analysis and run experiments. Uh, 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 for example, we have an XMAS um, uh, 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 set of analyses that we run on the data and so on and so forth. Uh, the reason we need to capture all the, all the raw data also is because uh, it is when you're doing uh, medicinal discovery and so on and so forth, it's very important to capture all the raw data, and, it, and it's, 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 um, it's federal uh, law to, to, that you be able to go back and, and, and test and check and check all the uh, all the uh, raw data. So um, the Ionomics project. Um, so the I, um, So here we're talking about gene regulation, and the Ionomics project also. Um, though this is a, um, it's a plant uh, experiment, but in fact the same pipeline, the same infrastructure is used. Um, the same infrastructure is used um, by the, um, um, by the um, ionomics group and the pipeline group and the proteomics group. So the idea is what we're trying to do now is to take the... Um, is to take the um, um, uh, the same. It's basically the same. The same thing. You've got. The, so let's run through this. So this is actually a a planting uh, path, by the way. There's nothing fancy about it. Th this is actually um, uh, a, gr a a planting plot uh, where they're actually plants planted there, and and they're trying to figure out how plants become more efficient in terms of uh, iron and zinc and so on storage and how to make specific uh, plants uh, more useful. And um, 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 so as you can imagine, uh, these experiments take a long time and there's a lot of data that gets gathered in the middle. How do you build this infrastructure so that the, the horticulturist doesn't have to worry about by the way, in the back here, we have a DB2 database. This is running in WebSphere. And um, um, the, uh, the uh, scientist doesn't have to worry about uh, how you do the, dis the, the discovery uh, on the data and how you search the data and so on and so forth. So we've got a basic search techniques and we've got an advanced search techniques where uh, they could go look at specific runs, specific experiments, they look at specific uh, results and so on and so forth. So um, the, where I think we're making um, innovation at Purdue in this, not in building these specific systems, but in actually building a generic infrastructure that can be used by the uh, ionomics people, the proteomics, and the uh, genomics, and so on and so forth, so that they can jointly study the, uh, the um, 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 study the cells and, 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 and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna skip, uh, uh, I wanna spend a few minutes talking about um, some of the specific research projects that we have. So one of these groups in the Cyber Center is a database group, which is uh, our group, um, my own group also. Um, and this is not a small group, I would say all together, this is about a group of 45 people. And, um, this is an example of one of the projects that um, that we have in the um, in the uh, database group, and and um, building the uh, data infrastructure. This specific example is for uh, is for the uh, healthcare surveillance, and that is we've got heterogeneous databases. First of all, we're doing data cleaning, uh, data scrubbing on the data. We're doing semantic extraction, building metadata on the uh, databases that. Uh, that are more visual. We're doing the schema matching, and um, um, uh, we're also because the fact that this is uh, uh, healthcare data. There's some privacy uh, um, uh, privacy issues, 
in terms of uh, anonymizing the data before it is shared and so on and so forth. So this is a, um, 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 so to show you why the visualization is also very important, um, um, on the left is a representation of um, uh, the same data that's on the right, but on the left it's, uh, it's numerical, it's tabular, and on the right it shows uh, a direct correlation between temperature and O-ring damage, and, 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 and this is much more uh, uh, powerful way of, of saying things. This is another uh, example that, uh, of a project building a infrastructure for medical education and, and, and it gives you the ability to browse, view, and play multimedia uh, data and, um, and um, uh, it, most of this data here is uh, video and, um, and uh, this is another uh, project actually this project just finished that we did for the Navy and um, this is a uh, uh, project for knowledge for t maintenance data. We were getting all the um, um, uh, we're capture we're capturing the maintenance uh, 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 procedures on board a um, uh, for a particular radar avoidance system um, uh, on an aircraft carrier and um, um, doing uh, knowledge projection on it. That is, trying to build a knowledge base as to what procedures, what things that went wrong. If this thing went wrong, then the next thing would go wrong, and so on and so forth. And when run, we run into glitches, we consult with a shore-based uh, uh, SMEs or, or experts. And, um, and um, um, so this is actually a, a working system that is uh, uh, deployed now um, 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 in the Navy in, at, at Crane. Um, this is the newest project that uh, we have, and again, it is taking all of these uh, bits and pieces and building a system for biological uh, database management. And, um, and um, um, this is a... Um, um, where we're doing the sequence processing, the annotation and the provenance, and the, uh, and the dependency tracking. I want to emphasize the annotation and provenance because this is the contribution of the system. And the idea here is that we wanted to uh, enable the database, the biological database, with the ability to annotate the data, which is, which is what uh, the people we work with tell us is uh, the most important thing. And, and um, so we allow, pe we allow the users to annotate uh, columns, to annotate rows, to annotate specific cells. And also we, allow, we um, provide capabilities to run operations. So for example, you can manipulate the annotation, you can, uh, you can um, query on the annotation, you can update the annotation, and so on and so forth. So imagine the annotation now is becoming a part of the database. And, and, you, and actually, we build a schema also for the annotation and, 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 and so on and so forth. So um, the system also indexes uh, uh, sequences and, and, uh, uh, and compressed sequences. And, um, um, and the other aspect of the system is provenance. And, that is, and this is an important feature that's, that's not uh, previously available in these uh, biological databases and that is um, the ability to uh, figure out for a particular piece of data that I have in the database, where did this data come from? What is the origins of this particular uh, uh, information? Uh, where was it, uh, uh, if it's aggregate information, where was it aggregated from, if it's uh, a copy, you know, and so on and so forth. So all the historical data is also stored in the, in the database. And, and we believe that this is also uh, a very uh, innovative work. So this is an example of the, uh, in, of the provenance in this uh, system. And, um, and this is the last example of a project that, that I have, and this is the newest project, and that is uh, the idea of querying physical um, uh, objects. And, and, and uh, here, it just imagine that uh, when you go through Google, and you search, you're searching now stored data. You're searching databases. You're searching um, uh, metadata. What we would like to do is 
going through Google would like to query and access the physical world, actually access physical objects. I want to be able to, instead of going to a database and getting information on the cameras and the chairs on, in this room, I would like to go straight to the RFIDs, tags that are on these chairs and in these cameras, and query them directly. So, and this is a, um, a new project that we have, and, we, and it's called Spacey. And um, so in here, we're doing uh, database discovery, querying and monitoring, building the heterogeneous index on this particular uh, physical world, and, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, um, this is sort of the um, overview of, uh, of some of the projects that we have uh, going on in the, um, on the, uh, in the uh, cyber center. And, um, uh, um, if you want to talk a little bit more about some of the work we're doing in the database group, also I can talk about that. Uh, how do annotations end up different from you just get more tables? Sorry, the question. So the question is. Um, the question is on the um, annotations, and let me uh, go to. So, in fact, that's exactly the objective. The objective is that you want to be able to treat the annotations as if they were um, uh, 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 part of the database. But you want to, in other words, because, because you, if they were treated as if they were a part of the database, say for example you have an attribute and the attribute called description. And the description has this, uh, uh, um, so this is the simplest form of an annotation. You have a field called description. Description contains some annotations. But then you could not uh, query this. You could not, um, you, uh, for example, what we want to do is we want to be able to, we want to be able to um, 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 run SQL queries on the annotation itself. For example, we have, yeah, but, but this is a, um, this is, a, so the idea is we want to be able, what we're doing is with annotation SQL, we want to add SQL constructs that allow you to manipulate um, annotations. For example, we want to be able to um, um, update the annotation. We want to be able to uh, figure out uh, a specific cells on this annotation. We want to have a specific annotation with a particular field, with a particular value, with a particular column, with a particular... So in other words, what it would be is it would be another table. It would not be an attribute. It would be another table behind this table that then you're joining with this table. If you want to think about it that way, that could be another way of thinking about it. But it's not a column in the table. That's fine. I'd say right. tables, not more columns. Yeah, so, so, I mean, so for example, if, if you want to think of it as, as an annotation table that then you would, you would join with the original table, you could, but uh, um, th then that, um, 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 so, so, yeah, so, so I mean. Uh, you add it, I mean, can't I as a user just add these other tables myself? No, but, but I mean, so, so tell me now, in, in, uh, you're building a MySQL database, you're building an Oracle database, how would you handle annotations? I mean, you, you don't, you don't, you don't have that. This is the table that annotates this triple, and this is the table that annotates this pair, and it's got three more columns, and uh, I have to make sure that whenever I change something in the original table, I go and update the columns in this other table. Right. It's not that I don't think that there's a lot of stuff to be done here. I just want to hear what your take on it is. Right. right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> um, um, Traditionally, that's not how annotations were handled, right? I mean, annotations were not handled as, uh, as, um, as databases. And what we want to do is we want to handle them as databases. I want to be able to, to run SQL queries on the annotations themselves, not because uh, they're, they're string fields, right? So, so um, th but that's not how they were handled. The way you're describing is how we would like to do them, but that's not how they are handled now in, 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 in database systems. I, 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 I can't see the, the actual uh, syntax for the, uh, for the uh, uh, annotated uh, SQL, but, um, but uh, that's why I was trying to see if I could read it, but I can't blow this up. But, um, uh, so I want to be able to add annotations, archiving and restoring annotations, propagating annotations, so I could propagate an annotation from one, um, uh, from one column to, to, to another uh, uh, database. I want to query data based on their annotation values and uh, I want to index and, and, and retrieve annotations. So unless those annotations were stored as first class uh, citizens in the database, I could not do those things. And, and existing database systems don't, don't allow for that. How did you, did you want to say something? Maybe that, uh, I mean, having having an, uh, having an extra table for the annotations, this is the way that we this is the way that it's going to be implemented. But from the user point of view, it's easier for him to to have uh, a, a constant in the SQL like add annotated data and label all these rows by the same description instead of inserting a specific row for each topic with the same annotation. So having these um, constants. For the annotation, and then from the background, from the at the back end, do whatever you want to do. So I think that's that's how. I okay. Is this your dissertation work? No, no, it's oh. not. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> this work started after he left. It, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't even thought of when he was there. Okay. I, I would imagine that the more critical thing would be the set of quantified statements, the rules that cause the annotations to be automatically synchronized as other things happen. Um, but that will only happen if the annotations are stored in the database. The annotations were stored as files outside of the database, which is what traditionally you think of their descriptions, uh, then, then that wouldn't happen. Well, I come from an AI point of view, so yeah, they would that. be stored in, the, in another file, they'd all sort of be there. Uh, storing them in the database has some, um, and, and I know the database stuff has gotten to the point where there were rules and triggers and, and those kinds of things, but some of the things that you want to say with respect to annotations, you don't want to, you want, want everything to look like it's in the database, but some of the things that you want to have happen, you don't want to make happen by making an additional row for each data item. You know, if everything is green, then having a table that says Fred green, <laughs> George right. green. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. I, there I agree with you for sure. I, I, and that's why uh, we're saying that, um, that um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, obviously, sure, you don't want to, you just want to create, you want to store all the things only that you have annotations for, not, not have. No, the, quite the contrary. You want to have annotations for things that don't require, it's the example I'm giving, we want to annotate everybody as having color green, but we don't want to store five more million cells in the database saying green, 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 green. We want to know that when you look somebody up, their color is green, or maybe their color is green unless they're in the exceptions list. Sure. Or sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Obviously, yeah, sure, sure. When you combine two guys, when you combine sure. an, uh, a, a blue and a red, you get right. a guy whose annotation is purple. Right, right, right. Yeah, sure. But that's, that's in some sense where it would seem yeah. like the interesting questions are. Right. I mean, so so that would be one way of, of uh, one question as to how to how to implement this and how to build it. Sure, yeah. And also supporting some 
I'm supporting some rules for the annotation. So when you combine annotations for the same cell, you get a new one, and you provide these rules to the database in a Right. Yeah, so, so I mean, in fact, in fact, um, those would be in add annotation here. There's some rules that, um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, thanks. Thank you.